Good morning students. Let's start with a new chapter today. The Little Match Girl. You have done most of the chapters in class 9th and in class 10th today we will be starting with a new chapter that is The Little Match Girl. Now this chapter is written by Hans Christian Andersen and it's a beautiful story. This story is again about a little girl how she's actually struggling to sell her matchsticks. Uh, the chapter is on page number 87 of your book. Now, as you already know me, I would request you to go through the introduction of the chapter as well. You all, you'll always get or you'll always find some answers there itself. So please do not ignore this part of your chapter. Always go through the introduction and then you can move towards the story. Now see, this story is about this little girl who is actually forced by her father to go out and sell matchsticks. It is extremely cold outside. It is all, you know, uh, bleak and bitter cold. And this poor girl, she's walking with few matchsticks in her apron. Her hands are also filled and she's walking on the streets of the town it's snowing and she has got her mother's slippers that she's wearing now when she was crossing the road uh, there was this rushing cart coming towards her she ran and the slippers were so big that they just uh, got lost and this poor girl was again without or um, any slippers or she was uh, her feet were in fact naked so you can imagine the condition of this poor girl. It was extreme cold and this poor girl, she's just walking on the streets barefoot and bareheaded, right? She was not even wearing anything on her head. She was trying to sell matches and nobody, the, the people on the streets, nobody was interested in buying any. Now this poor girl, she was feeling cold, she was very hungry and she really wanted to go home. But there's a reason why she'll not go home, because of her father. If she'll go back home without selling even a single match, match box, then her father will beat her. Apart from that, you can see that this poor girl, the condition of her house is not good. It has got holes and there's not a proper roof as well. So she feels that it's useless going back home and getting scolded or beaten by her father. So she prefers to stay on the streets only. Now, after trying a little hard, this poor girl, she looks for a space where she can sit and she can huddle herself. She can keep herself a little warm. So what she did, uh, there was some space between the two houses. So she somehow uh, huddled herself between that gap. She was sitting there while she was actually feeling cold. So what she actually did, she lit one matchstick. Now the moment she lit that matchstick, she thought I can actually lit a matchstick so that I can warm myself. And that's what she thought. And when she lit the matchstick, suddenly the environment around her changed and she could see a brass stove. Remember that's the image one that I've written there. That's what you need to remember. So what was the first image of a brass stove? Now this brass stove actually symbolizes the warmth that she was looking for. Why? She was feeling cold. It was extreme cold. So, she, okay, remember. So she was looking for some warmth and because of that, she lit the first matchstick. Now as it finally, after uh, a second or moment, it... Uh, blew off and finally the image also disappeared. She again lit the second matchstick. Now second time she could actually see the house uh, next to her. The wall it became transparent like a gauze and she could actually see the dining table right which was uh, covered with china crockery and all and she saw a roasted goose jumping off the dining table and walking towards her. So the second image symbolizes that she was hungry. Is that clear? She was looking for some warmth. She was feeling cold. She was very hungry. She was starving. Now, then the moment it the matchstick uh, went off, suddenly the image also disappeared. She again 
lit the third one. The moment she lit the third matchstick, she saw a huge Christmas tree, right? And it was filled with lights. She could actually see the beauty of that Christmas tree. And the moment she tried to touch the lights on the Christmas tree, it again vanished away and the lights turned into the stars. While she was looking at the stars, once she could actually see a falling star. The moment she saw a falling star, she remembered what her, or what her grandmother once told her, that a falling star means that one soul is going up. I'm sorry, one soul is going upright. One person is dying. And again, what she did, she lit another matchstick. Now with the fourth matchstick, she could see her grandmother, the one who was already dead. And the moment she saw her grandmother, she was so excited and she she started, you know, uh, lighting a few more matchsticks so that her grandmother would not disappear. She was longing for love, right? And the moment she saw her grandmother, her grandmother held her tight, right? And finally, we can see that her grandmother took her away into a different world where there was no pain and suffering towards God. So we can understand that finally, because of the cold, this poor girl, she died, right? And finally now she was at a place or in heaven where there was no pr problem, there was no cold, hunger or anything. She was with a loving grandmother. She was very happy to be with her. So it's a beautiful story. If you read it, you'll understand um, how it is ironical that we ignore people who are struggling. What is actually needed is compassion. What is actually needed is love or, you know, care for humanity. We are more concerned about our own things, our own desires, um, rather than taking care of the ones whom we could have helped, but we just ignore. So let's start with the chapter. It's a beautiful chapter. You will love it. Right? Hans Christian Andersen was a Danish writer best known for his fairy tales. However, his stories are not restricted to children alone and have theme of universal appeal that transcend age and culture. Anderson had a very unhappy childhood and much of his stories reflect this sadness dealing with loss and death. So maybe this uh, writer, he had the worst or he had a, you know, unhappy childhood because of which his stories, they reflect loss and death. The Little Match Girl is one such. Set around Christmas, the story tells of a little girl who, unable to sell her matchsticks, dies of cold and hunger on the street, even as people are celebrating the birth of Christ child inside their warm, cozy homes. The tale is rich in irony, imagery and symbols, emphasizing the need for compassion for those who have so much less than we do. So we need to feel the compassion towards these people. Okay, so it's a nice story. We'll continue with the story. Open to page number 88. It was bitterly cold, snow falling, and darkness was gathering, for it was the last evening of the old year. It was New Year's Eve. So remember these points. In the cold and gloom, a poor little girl walked, bareheaded and barefoot, through the streets. Now this girl, she was a poor little girl who was walking around the streets bareheaded and barefoot. She had been wearing slippers, it is true when she left home. But what good were they? They had been her mother's. So the slippers that she was wearing were actually her mother's slippers. So you can imagine how big they were. The little girl had lost them as she ran across the street to escape from two carriages that were being driven terribly fast. So this poor girl, while she was crossing, she tried to run or escape from these two carriages. And while doing so, what happened? One slipper could not be found and a boy had run off with the other. 
Now, when this boy took the other one, he made fun of this poor girl by saying that these slippers, he says, that it would come in very handy as a cradle some day when he had children of his own. So he made fun of her slippers that they were so big that he can use them as a cradle. So the little girl walked around, walked about the streets on her naked feet, which were red and blue with gold. In her old apron, she carried great many matches. She had a packet of them in her hand as well. Nobody had bought any from her and no one had given her a single penny all day. So this poor girl, she was walking on the streets, bareheaded, barefoot, trying to sell matches and the people around, they were enjoying. They were in their warm, cozy houses, some were walking on the streets, but nobody was bothered about her. Nobody had bought any, okay. She crept along, shivering and hungry, the picture of misery. Poor little thing. So you can imagine how miserable she was. The snowflakes fell on her long golden hair, which curled so prettily about her neck. But she did not think of her appearance now. Lights were shining in every window, and there was a glorious smell of roast goose in the street, for this was New Year's Eve and she could not think of anything else. It was a day of celebration, the day when she died, right? So she could actually imagine the warmth and the food the people were eating. She huddled down in a heap in a corner formed by two houses, one of which was projected further out into the street than the other. But though she tugged her little legs up under her, she felt colder and colder. She did not dare to go home. This is what you need to remember. She was not ready to go home. Why? <clears throat> for, she had not, for she had sold no matters and earned not a single penny. Her father would be sure to beat her. And besides, it was so cold at home, for they had nothing but the roof above them, and the wind whistled through that. Even though the largest cracks were stuffed with straw and rags. So she was not ready to go home. Why? We have two valid reasons here. One, because she was scared of her father, that her father will beat her. And second, she because of the miserable condition of the house, right? Her thin hands were almost numb with cold. If only she dared to pull just one small match from the packet, strike it on the wall and warm her fingers. Now this is what she thought. She pulled one out, scratch, how it spluttered and burned. It had a warm, bright flame like a tiny candle when she held her hand over it. So she must have lit the match stick and she was now trying to keep herself warm. But what a strange light. It seemed to the little girl as if, now it's an image, as if she was sitting in front of a great iron stove. So beautiful, so beautifully and gave out such a lovely warmth, right? Remember, it was a great iron stove with polished brass knobs and brass ornaments. Oh, how wonderful that was. The child had already stretched her feet to warm them. When went out, out went the flame. The stove vanished and there she sat with a burnt match in her hand. So that's the image one. She struck another, it burned clearly. And when the light fell upon the wall, the bricks became transparent like gauze. Gauze is your cotton bandage that you must have seen, right? It is transparent. So that is what it is here. Second image is when she struck the second uh, lid, matchstick, she saw that the wall became transparent. She could see through it. She could see right into the room where a shining white cloth was spread on the table. It was covered with beautiful china and in the center of it stood a roast goose stuffed with prunes and apples steaming deliciously. So second image talks about her hunger. So the moment she saw the roast goose, it shows that she was hungry. 
And what was even more wonderful was that the goose who hopped down from the dish waddled across the floor with carving knife and fork, and its back waddled straight up to the poor child. So what she imagined that the roast goose jumped from the table and started walking towards her. Then out went the match. Nothing could be seen but the thick cold wall. So finally, there was nothing. That was again her imagination, or we can say hallucination. She struck another match, and suddenly she was sitting under the most beautiful Christmas tree. It was much larger and lovelier than the one she had seen last year through the glass door of a rich merchant's house. A thousand candles lit up the green branches and gaily colored balls like those in the shop. Windows looked down upon her. Look down means she felt as if the beautiful balls or beautiful Christmas tree decoration was just looking down at her. Oh, you are a poor little girl kind of a thing. The little girl reached forward with both hands. Then out went the match. The many candles on the Christmas tree rose higher, higher through the air. And she saw that had now turned into bright stars. One of them fell, streaking the sky with light. Now someone is dying, said the little girl. For her, for her old grandmother, the only one who had ever been good to her, but now who was dead, said, Whenever a star falls, a soul goes up to God. She struck another match on the wall. Once more, there was light. And in the glow stood her grandmother, also bright and shining, looking so gentle, kind and loving. Granny, she cried the little girl, cried the little girl. Oh, take me with you. I know you will disappear when the match is burned out. You will vanish like the stove, the lovely roast goose and the great glorious Christmas tree. Then she quickly struck all the rest of the matches she had in the packet. For she did so want to keep her grandmother with her. The matches played up with such a blaze that it was brighter than broad daylight. And her old grandmother had never seen so beautiful and so stately before. She took the little girl in her arms and flew with her up so high towards the glory and joy. Now they knew nothing. Neither cold, nor hunger, nor fear, for they were both with God. But in the cold dawn, in the corner formed by the two houses, sat the little girl with rosy cheeks and smiling lips, dead, frozen to death, on the last evening of the old year. This little girl, she was sitting there between the two houses. The next morning, the people could see that the poor child had died. She is frozen to death, right? The dawn of the new year rose on the huddled figure of the girl. She was still holding the matches and half a packet that had been burned out. She was evidently trying to warm herself, people said, but no one knew what beautiful visions she had seen and in what a blaze of glory she had entered with her dear old grandmother into the heavenly joy and gladness of a new year. So people, they were there, right? But they were so ignorant that they they were, or I, I can say that they were so self-involved that they were not at all worried about the poor little girl who was walking on the streets and no one, no one was bothered about her. So what we need to have in today's world is compassion, compassion towards the others. Why, why do we do that? So we have to understand the fact that we should be passionate, right? We should have compassion. We should try to help others. We should make sure that not only us, but everyone is safe, right? So finally, the next day, people could only see her figure. They could only see that she was dead. They thought that maybe she died because she was trying to keep herself warm. But they had no idea about her visions, about the images that she saw, 
and how beautifully she entered into heaven with her old grandmother. So that is it for today. Just do one thing, go through the chapter, read it nicely and understand the story. It's a beautiful story, right? I hope you've understood it. There's no difficult word. There's nothing that you need to worry about. Just go through it, okay? So that is it for today. Thank you.